Hey guys, I am Venkat and this is part 3 of MongoDB video series. In this video, we'll discuss building a RESTful API service using Visual Studio 2022, ASP.NET 6 and MongoDB database. Visual Studio 2022 is the latest IDE from Microsoft. If you don't have it installed already on your machine, navigate to this website, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads, and then select this first option, download Visual Studio with .NET. The community edition is free and will do for the API that we are building in this video. So select this first option, download the community edition, and then follow the simple on-screen instructions to install Visual Studio 2022. After the software is installed, fire up Visual Studio, click on File, New, Project. We want to create an ASP.NET Core Web API. So using the search text box here, search for ASP.NET Core Web API. We have a couple of matches here. The first one is for C Sharp and the second one is for F Sharp. We want to use C Sharp. So let me select that and then click Next. Let's name our project student management and I'm going to create at this location C colon projects and the solution name is also student management. Click next. As of this recording, the latest .NET framework is .NET 6. So select it from this drop down list as the framework. Leave authentication type as none and then check these three check boxes. Configure for HTTPS, use controllers and enable open API support. We discussed what is Swagger and open API specification in detail in parts 29 and 30 of this Azure video series. So if you're new to these two concepts, please check out these two videos. So on this additional information screen with .NET 6 selected and these three checkboxes checked, click create. There we go. We have our project created. The first thing that we want to do is install mongodb.driver NuGet package. So let's go to Solution Explorer, right click on the project name and then select this option, Manage NuGet Packages. Make sure you are on the Browse tab and then in the search text box here, search for mongodb.driver. Notice the first option here is the official .NET driver for MongoDB. Select that and then click Install. Accept the license agreement. There we go. NuGet package installation complete. Now, what we're building here is a student management API, and we're going to store all our model classes in a separate models folder in our project. So let's go to Solution Explorer, right click on the project name, and then we want to add a new folder. Let's name it models. And in this models folder, let's add a new class. Let's name it student. Now, when data is retrieved from MongoDB database, the student JSON data is mapped to this student class in .NET and vice versa. So within this student class, we need a few properties. First, let me paste those properties here. From the mongodb.driver NuGet package that we just installed, we need two namespaces. So at the top of this student.cs file here, let's include those two using declarations. So we need mongodb.bson namespace, and we also need mongodb.bson.serialization.attributes. We want this ID property in this student class to be mapped to this ID field in the student JSON document in MongoDB. To achieve this, we're going to decorate this property with Bison ID attribute. Notice when I have the mouse over from the IntelliSense, we can see this attribute is coming from mongodb.bison.serialization.attributes namespace. And this is the reason we included this using declaration. I'm going to decorate this ID property with another attribute, Bison representation. This attribute automatically converts Mongo data type to a .NET data type and vice versa. In this specific example, it's going to convert Mongo data type object ID to a .NET data type string and vice versa. Notice this Boolean is graduated property. I'm going to decorate this property with Bison element attribute. Basically, it's mapping this Boolean is graduated property in our student class to graduated field in the Mongo document. Let's do the same with these other properties as well. Name, courses, gender, and age. 
There we go. The rest of the properties are decorated with Beeson element attribute. At this point, you might be wondering, all these properties, especially name, courses, gender, and age, have the same name as the fields in Mongo document. So what's the need to decorate these properties with Beeson element attribute? Well, the casing is different. That's the reason. In C sharp, the properties start with an uppercase letter, whereas in Mongo, the field start with lowercase. There are several approaches to handle this case sensitive mapping. One of the easiest and clean approach is to use Beeson element attribute. Now, if we take a look at one of the student documents in Mongo database, notice we have address field in the document. But if we take a look at the student class on the .NET side, we don't have a property corresponding to the address field. So the question is what to do if we receive extra fields from Mongo database? Well, we can instruct the serializer to ignore any extra fields. And the way to do that is by decorating this student class with Beeson ignore elements attribute. Next, in our application configuration file, that is in appsettings.json, we're going to include Mongo database connection string and other pieces of configuration data that we need. Now, if we take a look at MongoDB Compass, notice the collection name is student courses and the database name is my first database. And this is the configuration data that we are storing in our appsettings.json file. The collection name is student courses and the database name is my first database. All that is left to do is to get the connection string. To get the connection string, log into your MongoDB Atlas account and then make sure you are on the databases tab. Click connect. We want to connect our application. So select this second option. And from the drop down list here, select your programming language. In our case, we are using C Sharp and .NET. We also need to select a version. Uh, the version that we are using is later than 2.13. And copy the connection string from here. Paste it within our appsettings.json file right here. Next, replace the password, including the angle brackets with your actual password. And if we take a look at our MongoDB Atlas account, notice the message here, ensure any option parameters are URL encoded. To URL encode your password, navigate to this website, urlencoder.org, type in your password. I have it typed as hola hola space one, two, three, and then click this encode button. And we have the encoded password right here. Let me copy this and paste it in appsettings.json file. Next, in the models folder, I'm going to include a new interface. We'll understand the purpose of this new interface in just a bit. I'm going to name this interface iStudentStoreDatabaseSettings. Inside this interface, I'm going to include three properties. Notice the names of these three properties. They correspond to the three settings that we have in our appsettings.json file. Next, again, in the models folder, I'm going to add a new class file. Name it student store database settings. Now, we want this class to implement this interface, i student store database settings. And then we obviously want to provide implementation for these three properties. If you're wondering, why do we need this class and interface? Well, we're going to use these two to read and store Mongo database settings that we have in our app settings.json file. We'll discuss how to do that in just a bit. Now, for separation of concerns, we're going to place the code that calls Mongo database in a separate service layer. So to our project, let's add services folder. So right click on the project name in solution explorer, add new folder, name it services. In this folder, let's add a new interface. Name it iStudentService, click Add. We want this service to be able to perform all CRUD operations. So let's include the required methods. Bring in models namespace. This first method get returns the list of all students. This method returns a single student by ID. Create creates a new student and returns that newly created student. Update update student by ID. And finally, this remove method deletes student by ID. Our obvious next step is to provide implementation for the service. So in our services folder, let's add a new class file. Name it student service. We want this class to implement the interface iStudentService. Press control period and select the first option. 
implement interface. We want to inject a couple of things into this service. So let's include a constructor for that. Now, our Mongo database settings are present in this file, app settings.json, and we need these settings in our student service. And we also know it is this interface, iStudentStore database settings, that is going to carry these settings from app settings.json file to our student service. In a bit, we'll discuss how this interface is going to read the database settings that we have in app settings.json file. For now, let's inject the interface iStudentStore database settings into our student service and let's call this parameter settings. We also need I Mongo client interface and this interface is present in this NuGet package mongodb.driver so let's include the required using declaration first mongodb.driver and we want to inject I Mongo client let's call the parameter mongo client on this injected mongo client interface we have get database method obviously this is going to return the database for us and for it to be able to do that we need to specify the database name and it is the settings object that carries the database configuration information including the database name notice on the settings object we have database name property let's store the database in a variable called database on this database instance we have get collection method and as you can see from the IntelliSense it supports generics using which we can specify the type of collection in our case the type of collection is student and obviously for this method to be able to retrieve the collection we need to pass it the name of the collection again this incoming settings object has got the collection name so settings dot student courses collection name and let's store this collection in a variable called students we don't have this field yet so when i click on the field and then press control period we have different options here select the second option create read only field our obvious next step is to provide the implementation for all these crud methods that we have in this student service let's start with create we want to insert this incoming student object into our collection underscore students so underscore students this is our collection and on it we have insert one method because we are inserting one student we're going to use this method and obviously the parameter for this method is the incoming student object and then let's return the inserted student object next get we want this method to return the list of all students so again on our students collection we have find method and we want this method to return the list of all students so the lambda that we are going to specify here always returns true so we get the list of all the students finally convert this to a list and we want to return it so let's include the return keyword next we want to get a single student that is student by id it's going to be very similar to the implementation of this get so let's make a copy of it so we want to find a student where student id equals incoming id and we are getting a single student here so instead of to list we will use first or default next remove we want to delete a student whose id matches with this incoming id again the implementation is going to be similar so let's make a copy of this statement this method is not returning anything so we don't need the return keyword and instead of find method on the students collection we want to use delete one method because we are deleting one student so delete the student whose id matches with the incoming id finally update this method has two parameters the id of the student whose details we want to update and the student parameter contains the updated values again the implementation is going to be similar to remove so let's make a copy and instead of using delete one we want to use replace one method so the first parameter is our filter expression which we use to find the student whose details we want to update in our case we want to find the student whose id matches with this incoming id so that's our first parameter and the second parameter is the replacement and this is the student object that contains our updated values now here's the important bit to understand 
into this student service using this constructor. We are injecting these two dependencies, iStudentStoreDatabaseSettings and iMongoClient. And notice both are interfaces here. So we need to tell ASP.NET Core dependency injection system what concrete implementations to provide for these two interfaces. And we do that in program.cs file. This is standard dependency injection in ASP.NET. If you're new to dependency injection, we discussed it in detail in part 19 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. So please check out this video. So in the interest of time, let me paste four lines of code here and then I'll walk you through it. First, let's fix all the compilation errors by including the required using declarations. So this line number 10 here is basically telling ASP.NET to get the section with the name student store database settings from appsettings.json file. So basically, if you take a look at appsettings.json, notice we have a section with that same name, student store database settings. So basically, it's telling get all these settings from this section and then map them to this class student store database settings. And then this line right here is tying the interface I student store database settings with student store database settings class, meaning whenever an instance of this interface is required, provide an instance of student store database settings class. And if you remember within our student service class, we are injecting I student store database settings interface. So whenever this interface is required, provide an instance of student store database settings class, which contains the configuration information that we have in app settings.json file. And then here we are uh, specifying to Mongo client the database connection string. Now, again, in our student service, we're using this injected iMongo client to get the database. And for this service to be able to get the database, it needs to know the database name. So basically, we need to specify where it has to read the database connection string from. And here we are specifying that configuration information. And finally, we are tying our iStudent service itself with its implementation. So here we have our student service, which implements iStudent service. Our final step is to include a controller that exposes all these CRUD methods that we have in this student service. So to the controllers folder, let's add a new controller. What we actually want to add is an API controller and not an MVC controller. So select API and then select API controller with three right actions. Click add, provide a name for the controller. Let's call our controller students controller and then click add. There we go. Students controller is added with all the required plumbing in place. Notice this class is decorated with these two attributes, API controller, which makes it an API controller, and then the route attribute. So with this attribute in place, when we navigate to slash API slash the name of the controller in the browser, in this case, the name of the controller is students. So when we navigate to API slash students, this is the controller that is hit. And the first thing that we want to do inside this controller is inject this student service into it. And to be able to do that, we need a constructor. So let's include it. And the service that we want to inject is I student service. Let's bring in the required namespace first. And let's name the parameter student service. Generate the required private field by pressing control period and then select the second option. When this get method is called, we want to return the list of all students. For that, we're going to use this injected student service. Remember, on our student service, we have get method. So if we go to student service, notice we have the get method here, which is returning us a list of student objects. So within our students controller, let's change the return type of this method to action result of list of student objects. Let's bring in the required namespace. Next, we want to get student by ID. So in the URL, when we navigate to API slash students slash the ID of the student, then we want this method to return that specific student whose ID value matches with the ID we have in the URL. And that ID value is passed to this method. Now, if we take a look at our student class, notice the ID property value is string. So first within our controller action, let's change the data type to string. As you can see, the implementation is pretty straightforward. 
we pass this incoming id parameter to the get method on our student service this is the service which actually looks in the mongodb database with the student with that respective id if student is null that means we have not found the student so we return this message student with id equals whatever is the id not found otherwise we return that student so the return type of our get method is action result of student This post method creates a new student object. The new student details will be passed into this method from the body of the request. Hence, this parameter is decorated with from body attribute. And what we'll get into this method is a student object. So let's change the data type here to student and let's also call the parameter student. Implementation is a two liner. As you can see, we are passing the student object to the create method in student service, which will actually create an entry for this new student in the underlying MongoDB database. And then we're using this created at action method. Notice from the IntelliSense, this method returns the HTTP status code 201 created. And this method also sets the location header using which we can access the newly created student object. And for that, we are making use of the get action within this controller. And if we take a look at this get method, notice for it to be able to return the student that we have created, it needs the ID of that student, which we are passing using this second parameter right here. And the third parameter is the newly created student object itself. And from the IntelliSense, notice the return type of this method is created at action result, which again implements action result. So let's change the return type to action result of student next put which we use to update existing student details the student id is of type string and this parameter is going to be the student object itself which contains the updated values so the type is student and let's call the parameter also student we pass this incoming id parameter to the get method in our student service and retrieve the existing student if existing student is null that means we have not found the student with the given id so we return the message saying student with the id equals whatever is the id not found otherwise we pass both the parameters the student id and the student object that contains the updated values to the update method in our student service which will actually update the student record in mongodb database and then finally return no content from this method http status code 204 and notice from the intelligence the return type of this method is no content result which means we can again use action result as the return type finally delete first let's change the data type of id to string we pass the incoming student id to the get method on our student service which will retrieve the existing student if existing student is null that means we have not found a student with the provided id so we return not found otherwise we pass the student id to the remove method on our student service which will remove the respective student record from mongodb and then finally return this message student with id equals whatever is the id deleted and if you notice the return type of this method is okay object result which means we can also change the return type of this method to action result with all these changes in place let's run our project there we go our api is up and running and here we see all our students controller actions if we issue a get request to this endpoint slash api slash students we get the list of all students and to try out this action click this button try out and then click execute notice the server response we have the status code 200 okay and in the response body we have an array of student objects if we take a look at mongodb compass at the moment in the database we have four students and we see those four students in the response body right here in an array next let's try post we use a post request to create a new resource in our example if we issue a post request to this endpoint slash api slash students a new entry for the student will be created in mongodb so let's try it out in the request body we need to include the student object that we want to create let me paste a student object that i already have id property is not required a value for this field will be automatically provided by mongodb so let me delete that and as you can see the name of the student here 
a Sarah. We also have the rest of the fields populated. So let's click execute. There we go. The HTTP status code is 201 created. And in the response body, we have the newly created student object, including the ID field value that is generated by MongoDB. If we take a look at MongoDB compass, notice we have that newly created student right here. Notice under response headers, we have location URI, which we can use to access this newly created student object. So let's copy this location URI, paste it in the browser. And we have that newly created student. Next, let's try get student by ID. So if we issue a request to this URI, API slash students slash the ID of the student, we get that specific student. So let's try it out. In the ID field, we need to provide a value for ID. So let's get this ID from the browser. Execute. There we go, status code 200 OK. And in the response body, we have that specific student. Next, let's try put. We use put to update a resource. In our case, let's update Sarah's record. Let's change name to Sarah1 and update few other fields. There we go. In the server response, we have the status code 204 no content. And if we take a look at MongoDB compass, notice Sarah's record is updated as expected. Finally, let's try delete. And to be able to delete a resource, we need to specify the ID of the resource. There we go. Status code is 200 OK. And if we take a look at MongoDB, Notice Sarah's record is gone. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.